How's it going everyone? This is James Traley from James Films and I'm so excited to be back with you once again. It's been a long break. Thank you so much for your amazing patience. It's been a busy couple months for me. A lot of updates for you, specifically for my work for NASA. I had the chance last month to travel down to Cape Canaveral to be on live TV to cover the Lucy launch. One of our spacecraft is going off to space for a 12 year mission. I got to interview two experts about the mission and stand just a couple feet away from our spacecraft about in a, day, a day and a half before it launched to space. Two, one, zero. Liftoff, Atlas V takes flight, sending Lucy to uncover the fossils of our solar system. Also over the past couple months, I worked on a cartoon series for the mission and a bunch of different outreach videos, which were a lot of fun to produce, very time intensive, but I was super proud of the result. And I also moved to a new apartment. The space behind me is one that I've been working to design over the past couple weeks. And I've also really been working hard to up the quality of my tutorials. Lots of cool stuff in store for you coming up. So excited to show you all the new developments. So let's get right into today's tutorial. For all of my projects, I begin by gathering references. This is crucial to know what you're gonna be working off of. What are you gonna be making in 3D? For this specific project, I went to the subreddit Vaporwave Aesthetics, scrolled through and found a lot of really great source material to kind of use in a mood board for the project. I like to save out a lot of these images and also use another site called Unsplash that has a lot of really great images as well, all royalty free that you can download and bring into your project. I like to create a mood board on something like Google Slides, and then once I have a nice set of images, I'll save it out as a JPEG, and then go on over into Blender, and using the image editor, I'm able to actually open up that JPEG of my mood board, and have it there as reference for the entire time I'm working in Blender. So let's get to actually blocking out the room. We're gonna be using some very basic shapes here to just kinda of get a lay of the land and start to develop a nice scene. Just using a couple simple loop cuts, and extruding different faces of my mesh, the default cube, ye old default cube, I'm able to get a really interesting result already. I kind of referenced this little image of, uh, it looks like almost like a cafeteria of sorts, where you've got these kind of jagged edges up by the roof. I think it looks really cool, or by the ceiling rather, it looks really interesting, and so I tried to emulate that with my initial block out here. A little interlude, I wanted to actually set up the camera. This is an important step for me because I wanna know what my scene's gonna look like as I continue to build it out and add increasing detail. So pretty early on, I use Control Alt Zero to snap my camera to my viewpoint and kind of modify around there, adjusting the uh, camera aperture as well as the actual dimensions of the camera itself. I usually go for 1200 by 1500 for Instagram if I'm doing that, 1920 by 1080 for YouTube if I'm in, making animations. And then I continue blocking out my scene. So for this one, I really like these columns that I saw in this reference image. And they also had this kind of interesting like neon strip of lights around it too. So I bookmarked that using a texture, uh, kind of as a placeholder that I was gonna come back to and revisit later, make an emission texture, like a nice neon light, and then continue to do different loop cuts to make more details to my scene. It's really surprising how such little details, like these little elements up by the ceiling, can really go such a long way uh, to adding realism and intrigue to your scene as well. So I really think it's important to take time uh, blocking out things and increasing and kind of going from the kind of macro details slowly down to these micro elements in your scene because they really do make a big difference and really do add a lot of interest to your scene, visual interest for the viewer uh, as they're looking. In one of the references, I kind of like this curved element where you had some lights kind of stripping up near the ceiling as well. So I just made a cube, beveled the edge of it, duplicated it a couple times, and started to play around actually with the proportional edit modifier to start to kind of pull in and out different parts of that ceiling. So you'll see here I add a little bit more geometry to it and start to kind of pull out different parts to make a little bit more curviness to it, uh, kind of going in line with some of the references that I was seeing for these little mall cafeterias or food courts here. Initial lighting design. Now that we've got kind of a basic idea for our scene, I like to splash some light in using an HDRI. There's a whole bunch of really nice free runs from HDRI Haven. I've linked a bunch in the description of this video. I just pull one up and this gives me an initial kind of color profile for my room. But then I actually wanna bring in a sun lamp to actually add a little bit more directionality to the light itself. I find that the HDRI doesn't really do enough 
to add nice shadows to my scene. So I start to play around a lot more with the lighting, switch on over into cycles in that side view that I had up there, and start to get a flavor for my scene. You can see there's some interesting stuff starting to happen here. These columns are adding some nice shadows to our room. We're getting some interesting shadows up in the kind of crown molding, if you will, part of the ceiling where those neon lights are eventually gonna be. And you know, while I'm at it, let's actually start to make those neon lights neon. So I add a kind of a placeholder texture, which actually I ended up kind of tweaking just a little bit more and using as my final texture for that. So with that being said, let's actually start to create some more materials for our scene. I've linked a whole bunch of materials that I use for this one. They're all free uh, from 3D Textures, really great site, with a lot of great resources, but I encourage you to go on over and download these so you can play around uh, with the textures alongside me here. So what I do is actually select the layer I'm working with, unwrap it, and then hit Control, Shift, and T, and then click on the specific textures I want to use, and then Blender makes a nice principled BSDF texture setup automatically for me. I can then go on over into the UV editor, play around a little bit with how it's oriented in our scene, scale it up, scale it down as I see fit, and do the same process for all the other textures in my scene. Once I have them all downloaded into folders, it's super easy to just go through piecewise and pull them over into my scene. You can see I've got this kind of floor texture here that I want to add a little bit more detail to. I noticed in the reference this kind of tile-like view that looked kind of interesting. So what I added in was a brick texture and then played around a little bit with the offset of the texture itself so that it was perfectly square and also kind of no offset whatsoever. They're just always in line with each other and played a little bit with that mortar size so that it looked really cool. I then mixed this with my texture that I downloaded from the 3D Texture site and an interesting way to kind of have this ultra reflective looking band in between the main uh, ceramic tiles or the, the kind of um, the floor that we were having in our, our scene, maybe a linoleum floor or something in our scene. We now have this interesting brick texture kind of breaking it up and adding another level of interest to our scene. So a lot of fun and super quick to do that too. Blender's brick texture is a lot of fun to kind of play around with. I've used this for other scenes before, but it's kind of fun using it for this one as well in an interesting and different way than I usually would. As I always say with my videos, I don't want you to be following along exactly step by step with any of this. What I'm kind of trying to show you here, and, and oftentimes, you know, as it is here, it's sped up a bit, is just the process as a whole. How I'm thinking through the 3D process, what mistakes I'm making along the way. I mean, this is unedited here. You're seeing me changing things, maneuvering things around, dropping stuff out, changing the background, deleting elements altogether. Just have fun playing around with your scene and really, you know, take the time to make it perfect or as, as perfect as it can be, you know? I feel like you're never fully done with the render, it's only ever due, right? But just take the time to really enjoy the process. If you're kind of getting stuck on something, there's no shame stepping back and giving it a day and then coming back again with a fresh set of eyes and then tackling that render once more and seeing what new ideas came to your mind in the interim that you had between when you started working and when you picked up again. It's a lot of fun to kind of just work through these and I always enjoy the process of adding different layers to my render. So this one I kind of wanted to make an almost like oasis sort of thing here. So I quickly added in a plane, slapped on a sand texture that I've linked in the description from 3D Textures and then got to sculpting my scene. So using just the inflate brush and smoothing it out as I went, I was able to add a subtle bit of detail to make it almost look like sand dunes in the back of my render. This is a really fun process to do, really quick to kind of put together and make look believable. And it's something that I revisited quite a few times to kind of blend in a bit better with my scene as I worked. Now you see me adding neon lights into those top little elements that I had kind of sculpted out a little bit before with the proportional editing tool. I just quickly am able to extrude out specific parts of my uh, geometry here. So this kind of little strip you see at the top, assign that neon texture from before, and then make it integrate and look cool with the scene. This kind of reminded me a bit of, I don't know, old movie theaters or kind of that retro movie theater look. Now we're gonna be adding in some extra details to our scene. I've been adding details in all along here, but this is gonna take it a step further using something called ANT Landscape, which is a free add-on. You just have to enable it over in the add-ons tab for Blender. And you can really quickly generate some cool landscapes for your scene. I use specifically dunes. There's a a default effect that you can just use to procedurally generate dunes for your scene. I slapped on that same sand texture from before and just kind of kept coming back to my reference images to see what else I could add to the scene. I wanted to kind of change this wall up a little bit and I noticed in one of the reference images there's this kind of cool circular window in the very back of the render or of the image. 
So I wanted to do that myself. I quickly made a cylinder, uh, added a little bit of geometry to the wall by using a solidify modifier, and then sliced a hole out of the wall using the Boolean tool with the cylinder as the object affecting that Boolean. And then very quickly, I had a really cool little back window there. I had to fill out that space a bit by adding a couple more dunes in that little space there. I also duplicated that cylinder that I used to cut the Boolean, shrunk it down so it fit into the window, and then added in a glass texture to it from the Blender Kit add-on, a free add-on built into Blender. Tons of free textures and models and stuff in there. They've got a couple of really nice glass textures that you're able to use. And I just kind of messed around with a couple until I found one that I was happy with that worked well for my scene and called it a day for that. Continued adding in some extra details, played around with some things that didn't end up working, but I thought it was time to add in some plants. And for this one, I wanted to use solely the add-on Botan IQ from the Polygon IQ company. A really cool add-on. It's not free, but it's a really fairly affordable add-on that you can use and get some really great results by adding some cool plants to your scene. I've linked it in the description if you want to check that out. Really cool company. They do a lot of really great work with a lot of great add-ons. I actually use another one of their add-ons later on in this video, so stay tuned for that. But you can see I'm really quickly filling out the scene with some cool palm trees and uh, monstera plants that fill out the scene really well and kind of frame it a little bit more. Kind of bring your eye into the frame and really sell that oasis tropical feel to my render, which kind of goes hand in hand with a lot of the Vaporwave renders that I pulled for my mood board. A lot of them had monstera in them. A lot of them had these palm trees sitting by pools in them. So I kind of wanted to leverage that for my scene. I also used the add-on physical starlight and atmosphere in lieu of the HDRI that I had before, just because it gives me a lot more control of the exact color of my background of that sky. And if I wanted to return to actually animate the scene, it gives me a lot more flexibility to procedurally generate a sky and really have a lot of control with exactly how the atmosphere is changing in my scene. There is a built-in add-on in Blender. Uh, it's the sky texture that you can actually use and it gets you fairly good results, but that physical starlight atmosphere add-on really just pushes it to another level. It's a lot of fun to work with and I use it for almost all of my renders nowadays actually, especially for the ones where it's a day and night version. Now it's kind of slamming all of this stuff together that I've been talking about for these shapes and final tweaks. On the Vaporwave Aesthetic subreddit, I found this really cool reference image of funky little 90s shapes, and I actually used a spline tool um, to create this kind of interesting little uh, tube pipe thing here. I used a circle as the uh, object profile to make it look more like a 3D pipe, duplicated it, and then used the middle or the inner part as kind of like the light bulb filament of this neon tube, moved them around to, the, to fit my wall and kind of fit them in well there, added in a glass texture for the outer layer and that nice neon glow to the inner layer to match with the rest of the color of the scene. I had some fun duplicating these around, kind of resizing them, moving them around in my scene until they fit really well in my render as well. And once again, this kind of gives me that really cool kind of retro uh, movie theater aesthetic, I felt like. I really enjoyed putting this together and I thought it was, it was pretty cool, pretty cool result that I got pretty quickly uh, just using the curve tool to make these. I, said, I think I said spline. My, my brain is thinking Cinema 4D because I use Cinema 4D quite a bit as well. But the, um, the curve tool rather to generate those. Um, I kind of went through there a little bit quickly. So if you need to slow that down, feel free to slow it down and kind of exactly see the, the key clicks I was, I was pressing for that as well. Um, so for that actually right there as well, what you do is you add in, uh, like I said, a curve, and then you can adjust specifically the profile that you're pulling from. So I always use circles for making those tubes. I also wanted to add in like a back wall element too. I always like arches. I think they're really beautiful. In scenes, they kind of add this nice geometry to the scene as well. And so I made this kind of semi-transparent wall texture, kind of played around with it. It was from Blender Kit, kind of messed around a little bit more to get it to my specific liking. And then I added in a vehicle from another add-on from Polygon IQ, which is the traffic add-on. It's a kind of a cool Ford Mustang that I thought would look cool in the scene. And this add-on is really great and gives you a lot of flexibility to play around with the cars and vehicles that you add into your scene. You can adjust the headlights on the car. You can add some procedural dust and grime and stuff to the texture of the car's body. You can change its color. You can actually animate it. Uh, for this one, it's just a still image, but you can actually animate the wheels moving, the car driving on a road. Um, you can actually tilt the wheels and stuff as you see I'm doing here. And so really quickly, I had this believable garage, this car sitting in there. And this is the final result, a really fun project to put together. And pretty much the whole project file minus just those paid elements is available for my Patreons who are supporting me. Thank you so much for all of them. These are the supporters that have supported me this past month. 
on Patreon. Thank you for your continued support, and thank you so much for tuning in to this tutorial. It's been a really long time. So glad to see you all again here on YouTube. Please let me know how you're doing in the comment section below. Subscribe for more tutorials. There are a lot more where this one came from very soon. So very excited to be back with you once more here on YouTube. Have a wonderful day, all of you.